see everybody popping in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi there. Good to see everybody. Can you see that there's actually a little bit of daylight left out my window? <laughs> We're just so excited. We closed when we closed the shop the other day. Kristen and I looked at each other and said, wait a minute, it's not pitch black anymore <laughs> when we close up. <laughs> And I see Mary Ellen is here. I, Mary Ellen sent me a beautiful picture of her that will definitely go in our slideshow, possibly even in this week's email, we'll see. Um, but so fun to start seeing. Oh, look, there you are wearing it, Mary Ellen. <laughs> beautiful. Iris, I have a question. Okay, next great. Week, next week is Valentine's Day and it's Ash Wednesday. Are we meeting? Well, so this is, this is, a, this is, we've been talking about this. Um, I will let you know for sure. Um, right. I am actually not going to be on the zoom next week because my mom is having knee surgery and I'm going to be mm. with her on that's her surgery date. Um, but so I talked with Kristen about running the zoom um, for anybody that did want to pop in. So Kristen may take a hand at that, but if we make any sort of changes we will, and, and cancel, we will let everybody know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. How's everybody's knitting coming along? It's coming. I, I just about the, uh, oh. starting the decreases. And do you just do the decreases in the front and back? Obviously, not the sleeves, right? Right. Uh, so, yeah. So just at the V, and which is great news for us cart butters because we don't have to do any funny decrease business on the pattern part. It's simply just at the at okay. the front and at the back, like you said. Yep. So I'm going to do the SSK and then go to the next marker and knit two together and then knit across the sleeve and then go to the back and do the same thing. Yes. Yep. Okay. I, is it, I think I haven't think that. <clears throat> um, on the cardigan, it's knit two together and then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it'll it will tell you which sequence to do it where and and you'll be fine with it. I don't know if you saw in the email I mentioned about the just be cautious about your SSK side because I had this terrible laddering. So good. Okay. You can learn uh, from yeah. my mistakes. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. I, I have done I have practiced and practiced both the LLD and the SSK. And I've gone on your YouTube and other YouTubes to try to figure it out. I spent a whole day, oh my goodness, and I actually ripped out and went back because my grandmother was saying to me, you can't have that. <laughs> but oh, hope no. But hopefully, hopefully I have it basically now. And yes. I'm trying to do a mem memorizing it as I go so I can remember. I have one bad spot, but I can touch that one up. So. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, the other thing too, um, Judy, that I think about is I'm a big fan of, you know, especially in a pattern where, I mean, for my eyes, this is a little bit of a smaller size font. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I'm a big fan of taking a, you know, I love the post-it notes, but taking a big post-it note and having my SSK or LLD and just a little cheat sheet because I, if it's I big, wrote it and, down on the bottom. Good for you. It's, so I, I took the best from all the things I found, like you said, you know, yep. and I kind of wrote it down so I could understand it when I came to those areas. Great. And it's so far so good. And I'm just being very, very careful. Very careful. Yep. Yep. Now, the next thing will be that when I get up to the top is putting on the, oh, doing the plackets and then the neck. So. That I'm not sure about, but I, I will. I've been using your tutorials. They've been very, very helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wouldn't be this far if I didn't have them. 
That's so nice to hear. You know, I, of course, I, I wasn't able to make tutorials for every, every single moment, but we, we tried to do some of the ones that we felt like would, would help folks. And, and it is, it's hard. And the great part about YouTube is there's so many tutorials out there. So, but then it can be time consuming when you're just like, oh my gosh, the lighting in this one, or, oh, this is blurry. I can't see this. It's a little <laughs> Hunt and pack. I always love very pink knits and I'm very public about that. I mean, I turn to her for a lot of my, she's my, oh, she's my rock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. But so. it's been an experience. I said, as I'm getting older, this is a good thing. It's helps my uh, geriatric not get, not go into Alzheimer's because <laughs> I taught for 30 years and believe it or not, I actually taught back when I was 21 or two or three or five, I taught knitting and crocheting in a department store. They had a, a place where you could, people came to learn. That's awesome. So it's, a, it's, been a, it's been a journey and now I'm back and I love it. I did pottery in the interim, but I love mm. my knitting and crocheting. You can take it with you. Which is it is. That's the best part. One of the best things about this craft is it is portable and I, yeah. I will share that my, my, one of my, my stepmom was the first one to teach me how to knit and she's so sweet because she loves to come and visit the yarn store and get a new nice. project and stuff. But she says, well, the student has become the teacher now. Isn't that <laughs> nice? <laughs> yeah. I was telling my brothers and my brother and sister about my grandmother because she's the one who taught me eons ago, you know, like I'm like 70 odd years ago, she taught me. Wow. So, mm. Who knows what kind of knitting I do, whether it's American. <laughs> I know it's not continental. So I, I know that I did what I was taught. There you, know. you go. Comes out. That's but awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again. Oh, I'm so happy to have you along with us. And I love the Zoom <laughs> because I live kind of in the middle of nowhere. So my closest knitting store is 30 minutes to an hour away. So this mm -hmm. is really nice, you know, for help, for help. And you've been for very help helpful. for, well, all of us. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not the expert in this zoom room here. We've got so much knowledge uh, right. right here. I've been taking lots of good notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm seeing a few finished car around here. So can we, here, let's see, I see, it looks like Teresa, you've got yours on this week. That's looking gorgeous. Thank you. I finished it Sunday. Nice. nice. With a freak out. <laughs> <laughs> I had a freak out. <laughs> Teresa, would you just stand up one more time? Yeah, so we can see sort of the length. Now, how much length did you add? I added six inches. Okay. I am, I'm long waisted. So I always mm -hmm. add anyway, just because of that. Um, and it's all blocked. And that's where the freak out was because when I tried it on without blocking it, the sleeves were snug. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't worried about the length or the body. It was the sleeves were snug. So the blocking helped re make that. That's good, good to know. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I was, <laughs> I, I was trying to I quite a bit on this one. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I think I, tie, I think I ended up doing the wrong size because it wasn't fitting right. So mm -hmm. um, the blocking made all the difference. You know, I think that is really, so, I mean, a lot of people will talk about, you know, sometimes when we're knitting smaller circumference, your gauge may change. And I think we heard Kate talk about that's why she didn't recommend just starting with the sleeve. But I think this, I don't know if it's bulky yarn or what, but I've heard a, a couple of folks report that Ooh, the, the sleeve does feel a little tight, but you really, you can manipulate your yarn and remind us what your yarn was. Um, also, this is the, um, West Yorkshire spinners fleece, the DK. So I went with the natural. So this is just the dark Brown natural. I love it. I love how it feels. It's very, um, it's soft against my skin, but I know I'm wearing wool. I, it's hard mm -hmm. to explain, you know, but um, I sat with wearing it for a while because I get hot a lot. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to see how that would, 
how it would work. And it actually, I'm not overheating in it. So I like that. That is a huge plus because um, I I teach and my classroom is usually 75 degrees. So I probably Oof. won't wear this to work because that's just mm -hmm. not going to work for that. But at least I have it for other things. <laughs> It's such a such a beautiful yarn and um I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I have yet to knit with it, but it's definitely one of my yarn crushes. I'm really in the market for a reason to use that yarn. It looks just I, so good. I ordered the light brown. That's on its way. <laughs> that light brown in in person, I think of I don't know why, but the first time I looked at it and it's just stuck with me, it sort of to me feels like um it's just like this like like I think of like a particular, like a cookie. It's like a cookie, brown, sugary. Like it's just a beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yep. So I'm done. Yay. Yay. Congrats. <laughs> awesome. And Iris, I would like to sort of echo what Judy was saying. Your tutorials are so helpful. I just, I just attached my sleeves today and it, was a piece of cake because I had watched you do it, watched it a couple of times and it was, it was just so easy. And thank you very much for your help. So nice. I love hearing that. It's, I, I used to be a teacher too. And so I get to use that part of my brain when I'm thinking about it. And also I think having consumed so many tutorials, I'm always kind of thinking about the things that annoy me that I don't want to do. And I don't know. So they're not perfect, but hopefully they do give a little bit of help. Thanks for saying that. Very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Um, let's see, how's your second car bath going? You're doing the carp bath, right? Oop, you're muted. Oh, oh, the dog's been having a fit. See, <laughs> and there's nobody outside. Um, <laughs> and it's only a miniature dachshund <laughs> I joined and I'm on the decreases for my yoke and I have both, I mean, uh, both sleeves on it I hope to finish it this weekend perhaps I added three inches to the body mm -hmm. but it's really like when I'm working around it's because it's super bulky, it's just really heavy. Like mm. just on my lap and moving it around, moving yep. it around the needles. But I think I was a. <laughs> it's incessant. I think I was okay with the sleeves and and keeping track of my of my pattern. Great. When I, because I when I connected it, I took off four stitches on each side because I had those eight stitches mm -hmm. as my underarms. So they weren't part of the sleeve. And as you can see, there are my post-it notes. <laughs> so I can not sponsored by post, not sponsored by post-it, but you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, um, averse to that if post-its watching this 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 <laughs> Zoom. Yeah, you could get a kickback of a lifelong supply of post-it notes oh please don't give me the vapors yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's great i'm glad that you're using your post-its it's a, it's a good method and i i've worked with some people in the shop who are like am i the only one having this much trouble with my carpet sleeves it's like no it's a little bit of a thing to wrap your mind around it and just give yourself some time you just have to i mean the, the pattern is straightforward but you you do have to think yes little, like because it doesn't say cut yarn here like yep like our last year's mm -hmm. like, elizabeth smith did yes for yep. us and that's so something that Chris mean you know how to do that. Yes. And that's something that Kristen talks about too. You know, that we, we both talk about that, how it is different, different pattern writers, different assumptions, the way that patterns have changed over time. They used to really much more so be like the Kate Davies style where there were some assumptions made and they've sort of morphed into like patterns that get longer and longer and longer. Um, 
you know, to, to really explain for folks. So some people, like a lot of people that are newer knitters are used to that level of explanation. Not, yeah, not too many pages to print with hers many compared to some, to print print with some hers. of the others. True. Okay, now the dog's getting a drink <laughs> because she barked all that time. <laughs> she just, well, thanks. I do thanks Bible to... study. I do Zoom Bible study at 630. And, and many of the people are dog lovers. So right at the start of the prayer, she goes into a barking fit. She wants like, to participate. But everybody loves her in Bible study, so we're okay. Then she barks. And there she goes again. And there's nobody out front. There's no one there. That's so oh. funny. I love my baby girl. Yes. Oh. Well, thank you for the update, Lucy. And Arena, how is it going for you? I saw you just popped on. Hello. Well, I'm almost done with my body. I just have four more rows and I'll be done with the body. So I'm very excited. That's my progress since last Wednesday. So I am, uh, and then I have to start on the sleeves, but I've never made sleeves. So <laughs> I'm a little bit worried, not sure how to go about it because uh, that'll be a first one for me. With the body, I sort of uh, swatched it, and it was pretty straightforward. I was ready for it, but the uh, the sleeves I have to do in the round, and so I am um, a little unsure as to how to start. Amazing. So you're so you you're doing the card again, as I recall. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes. I I have knitted mittens in the round using magic loop. And I was thinking maybe I should just do something similar. It seems like a I don't know how to use DPNs. And it, uh, folks say DPNs are easier than magic loop because you don't have to pull the wire. But I'm, I have done uh, mittens with the wire pulling. It seemed to be all right. And it worked out okay. So I was thinking maybe I should do that that way. I did my sleeves on the magic loop and they worked out fine. Okay. Yeah. So. I think it's, it really comes to personal preference too, Arena. So I would echo, uh, you know, what Donna just said too. If you know magic loop, you're comfortable with it, you know how to move the cable, stick with it because um, I, I, I think... You know, you know that method for small circumference. If you ever want to try double pointed, it's great. But a lot of us who learned on double pointed have totally moved towards magic loop because we prefer it. So it is personal preference. But maybe since you know it and this whole sleeve making thing is new, just go with what you know where you can. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because also when I was making um, mittens, I had to set up for the thumb gasset and I was doing increases over there on magic loop so I I'm comfortable doing that so I'm thinking that might be just a good transition for the sleeves for me to do that wonderful yay yeah so that's my I'm very excited that I only have four rows I'm going to complete them this evening and then I'll be ready to start the all right congrats First time sweater maker. Yay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's very exciting. I, it's interesting as I was knitting the body, um, it ended up going faster than I expected and easier than I expected. And um, so it, it turned out to be a, a very good experience so far. Wonderful. It's so satisfying and gratifying too, to have a bulky weight yarn where you're really making some fast progress you're seeing the result quickly I think that's a it's a nice weight for a first sweater um too because you're getting those concepts you're getting the conceptual and we'll we could refer you to some future patterns if you get hooked with a sweater knitting bug that could be also good quality and and fun to knit if you're ready for that later very good thank you so much mm -hmm. Well, Jennifer, hi, haven't seen you in a little while. How are you? I'm good. I'm on my, on one of the sleeves. Yes. Hold so. that, hold that up, hold that up so I can spotlight you. Cause you're using that beautiful 
sweet oh oh so yes. pretty. Mm. and i keep gorgeous checking it because i i want to see how it's going to be on mm -hmm. i really well i have a fleece on now too but it's going to be really nice it's a and gorgeous good. color yeah it has mm. flecks of so many other colors in it you know that um i'm going to be aware of this a has been a, for me following a pattern <laughs> I have a tendency to decide I want to modify something and I'm just following the directions so that I don't mess it up. <laughs> I'm not adding anything extra and I'm just doing the pullover. So, so far, so good. Great. So good. Good to hear. The, the fun part, it's been really neat to see the different colors of Sweeto knit up um and see how I think it plays so well with this design um let's see who else have we not seen in a little while let's see here uh Wendy how are you <laughs> well let's see can you hear me yep oh okay well I just swatched <laughs> and it's um I don't know if you can see it ah oh, yes it's it's the Noro. Um, I know you only had one ball left of it, so I got some here. Uh, my local yarn store is also doing the same one starting tonight. Oh, so wow. I was doing a finish along and trying to get everything done. So I'm just starting the cast on of this right now. And I'm doing the swan dance. Nice. Um, so I'm sitting here trying to decide the size. And I was wondering if people found it pretty true to size or um i mean it, you know it wants it wants a few inches of ease um and i will say that with the swan dance depending on because as we saw on our zoom kate is this lovely petite person um so for a taller person you may or may not want to add an extra swan repeat you know before you split okay. um one of our in-store knitters knit the size four and i think she said she had um i think it was six repeats i can't, I can't quite remember but um it like she did one more than the pattern called for and it truly was a tunic length that came over her bum um, and that was how she was thinking she wanted to fit. Um, so it sort of depends, given that you have that swan lace thing, you know, your ability to change incrementally is dependent on like a four inch or something or three inch, however tall that um, yeah. motif I is. I was debating between the size three and the four. The three mm -hmm. is 46 inch and I'm like 42 or 43 inches. So is mm -hmm. there enough ease there or? Yeah, I mean, I would think so. I um, I'm about an um, what size did I do? I Your sweater is beautiful, by the way. I love it. Oh, I love it. Thanks. Love it. Oh. it. I do too. That's the the other thing we keep hearing is, well, I never want to wear anything else now. That so I have to get knitting <laughs> on another one, so I don't just wear the same sweater. Um, I think so. I am like a natural size, about forty one ish or forty. And I made the third size with 43 and a half. So that's not a ton of ease, but it, it, I felt like it was, it was enough. It, it was enough for me. It wasn't yeah. too wide. Um, okay. So, yeah. It looks stunning. And I'm going to Yarmouth tomorrow, which helped my friend for four days. So if I can get away, I'm going to run up to the store. So oh, I hope well, I can. That's um, awesome. We are having our midwinter yarn sale. So oh, yeah. could be a reason. I've been to ordering come. online and then saying, oh no, I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna go up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the and the yarn sale's online as well, just saying. Oh, I know. I've been checking it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have been so busy with it. Well, nice to see you. Maybe we will see you this weekend if we can. I hope so. Are you working Friday and Saturday? I work Sundays, but there's okay. lovely Miranda is there Friday and Saturday and Kristen Tendike as well. Yeah. 
So, Here is what you. yarn did you use for your sweater? It looks uh, be such a beautiful color. It is the uh, Eco Tweed by Ella oh. Ray. Eco Tweed Chunky by Ella Ray. And so there's some little bits of lighter, brighter colors. And I'm, I really enjoy the yarn. It is organic merino and some acrylic. It's like 75 organic merino, 25 acrylic. And it's, it's really soft. I'm loving it so far. And I'm actually knitting with it on another project, a different color, but yeah. Very I really like it. beautiful. Thank you. I didn't have any sweaters this color and I thought, well, we'll go for it. It's, it's, yeah, no, it's well, a good choice, yours. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> And my something. and my oh yes, please do. Oh, Hi, I just want to say that um, Jennifer noticed that we were in the same area, and she had me over last yeah. night and said, like, "Do the Zoom together." And we we lived in the same near the same places in New Jersey, and I forget where else, Jennifer. But it was really nice to meet her, and uh, it was very nice for her to reach out and ask me to come over. Fun. Yeah. So, so fun to see like Zoom people connecting. We had a couple <laughs> folks, I want to say they were both in maybe Louisiana, who realized like they both had to travel an hour to get to their local yarn store down there. And so like, well, we should coordinate so we can meet up in the middle and meet face to face. <laughs> That's awesome. Great to hear that connection, Donna. Yay. Yes, yeah, very nice. <laughs> Um, Zena, what are you knitting on next? Because I know you got through your your sweater so quickly. Oh, maybe Zena might be frozen. Are you there? Hmm. Maybe not. Anybody, anybody else feel like popping in and giving an update? Or we can just get a cable network in the mm, Okay. I can give an update, Iris. Yes, great. Um, I have my sleeves are on, and now I'm just starting the decrease. Yes. And I I love the yarn. This is Barocco Vintage Chunky in oh, Sage. Mm. It's really pretty and it's soft. So hopefully I'm just trying to stay strictly on the instructions, not think too hard about it and do exactly what she says. So hopefully it's gonna all turn out. I really love that picture. Did you say that was the sage color? Yes, yep. Sorry, not that picture, that yarn. Yes, look at that, so nice. It's a really nice color, very nice. And I've, the knit, Go ahead. I've knit with this yarn before, but um, never this color. And I really do, I really do like it. The vintage family of yarns is such a favorite. I know Mary Ellen knit hers in the vintage chunky too, in that beautiful grapefruit mix color. Um, but it's, it's really a favorite in the shop and 50-50 uh, wool acrylic. So you've got uh, the ability to wash it. And mm -hmm. whenever I t I'm talking with people about either the vintage DK or the, the worsted weight one, I, I always say like, you know, feel it. It's soft. It's not like the acrylic yarns we used to know, you know, the wool and the, this particular blend, it's really nice in the hands. So that's great. Glad you're enjoying it. Yes, I am. I'm really liking it. I was curious, um, I was watching the Fruity Knitting podcast and the, uh, they did, Andrew did uh, knit the Carbeth cardigan, but they ended up putting in some short rows in the back, um, similar to what Elizabeth Zimmerman suggested in her design. So they made some modifications and I was wondering, I will, you know, what is the purpose of short rows as a new knitter? I, I didn't quite understand why they felt it necessary to modify the design. 
Oh, oh, this is such a good question. Such a good question. I love this question. Um, I'm guessing they were adding short rows up at the neck arena. Oh, okay. Yes, they yeah. were. Neck. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I happen to have a sweater that I'm working on right now that is at that very point where it's a top down sweater design. And there are short rows in the back that I did. And that is because in this design, the back of the neck is coming up a little higher. So short rows are typically used when you want to raise the back of a neck up because when we wear something, you know, it, it just, if you look at one of your t-shirts or a sweatshirt or something, you can see, you know, in the front, it comes dips down a little bit. So with this design, it's symmetrical front to back. And I think that was a pretty intentional choice on the part of Kate, but maybe that's, that's not everybody's flavor. And maybe specifically with the, with the cardigan, um, I love those pretty knitting folks. I, I really enjoy their podcast too. Um, but it is, it's to raise the neck a little bit so that instead of having, cause I don't know, I can't, I don't know, but where this sweater, it's the exact same. So in the back, you're getting the, sorry, I'm trying to turn on the back of my, sorry, I'm trying sweater to is just back. dipping, I, dipping down a little bit. Dipping, dipping down a little bit. And so if I had short I rows, had it wouldn't rows, dip, down, dip down, it would stay. Somebody's not muted. Stay a little bit more flat and cover your cover your neck a little higher. Is that what you're saying? Because you, there was an echo, so it was hard to hear you. Sorry about that. Yes. So um, so the the way that this neck dips down. Yeah, um, I see. That. Right. Because there's no short rows and that part of the design and, and it, some, you know, but that could bother somebody. And if I had used short rows, that back of the neck would be up higher and, and would be like, like you say, at the same level. And the short rows would be just under, just under the, um, like, uh, the, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how they did it. I haven't watched that particular episode, especially because you know, with, with the way that the ribbing starts and where the decreases end, you know, and then it goes right into the collar ribbing. So I don't know how they handled that or where they would place the short rows. Elizabeth Zimmerman in her book, The Almanac, where she was, uh, where she was picking one, one is like one uh, design per month. The month of December, she has a sweater that has a similar design to Carbeth. And in that, does and in that does for the back. Sorry. Can you say that again? I was I just had to mute somebody. In that, she does recommend uh, using the short rows for the back, and mm -hmm. I think that my understanding is that uh, Andrea from Fruiting Knitting she used the instructions from Elizabeth Zimmerman's book. Mm -hmm. uh, and incorporated that into the Carbeth cardigan um, to, to uh, and, and added the short rows that way. That she, that's my understanding. She didn't go over the method in the uh, podcasts because it was a series of several podcasts where they were sort of discussing the Carbeth cardigan that Andrew was knitting. But um, she did reference the book and that they were, that she used Elizabeth Zimmerman's um, suggestions and modified Kate's design with the short rows in the back. My guess would be, and maybe other people have ideas on this, but if it were me wanting to do that, I would probably have, you know, finished my, um, finished my my decreases and just done a few before I went into ribbing that's how my brain might wrap my head around it but I don't know if anybody else might have a different way that they would think about that very interesting I just wanted to find out because I I heard them I, I hear periodically people talking about short rows in, in the sweaters at the top but I wasn't sure what that was for or how to do that so thank you the other, um, in the design that I'm working on for my first sweater that I'm designing, I also have short rows at the waist ribbing because the back of my sweater is designed to dip just a little bit below the hem or lower down than in the front. So different way of using short rows, but same concept. Yeah. Okay.
Thank you. I brought mine down to show you. Um, I put it on Facebook, but I'm not sure. Maybe everybody's not on Facebook, but here it is. Ooh, uh -huh. yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I added six inches here because I'm very tall. And then I ran completely out of yarn and I went as far as I could go. I had to do this like three times to make sure I had enough to bind off. And then I had to use... Um, waste stash yarn to do the underarms <laughs> so, so I barely did it. <laughs> that is awesome it's so beautiful and remind us of the yarn again um I was afraid you would ask me that all the labels are upstairs it's not a okay, yarn I would right. normally choose but I was okay. worried I might not like the sweater and I didn't want to invest and so it's an acrylic wool blend mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but it's really soft it feels mm. good but but it makes me think I maybe would make another one and, and buy different yarn. Great. It's nice to test drive, right? And I just have to say um, kudos to you for the yarn chicken uh, that you played with that finishing up your yarn and resourcefulness for, for grafting with other yarn. We just got these really ridiculously adorable, they're called... I think they're called Knitter's Merit Badges or something. And they're from Camp Stitchwood. You may have seen them, but in the shop, we just unpacked them yesterday. And there's one that's that says Yarn Chicken Champ. Actually, I have, I, because somebody gave it to me, it, Yarn Chicken Champ. I feel like, Vicki, you probably need this button here. To I do. just like <laughs> mark the occasion. But there's all sorts of these ridiculously adorable buttons that we have now, like, you know, Team Toe Up, Team uh a team show up team top down and travel knitter and they're very cute yeah well i i just finished another sweater if i'm allowed to talk about something yes. that's not a car beth this has been a this has gone on for too many years i can't remember what year i got started but i had a lot of trouble with it and i would take it out and start over and then i would have help and then i would forget where i was but it is a multi-cabled sweater mm -hmm. and and the reason I thought to mention it is because I also had just a little tiny bit of yarn left on this one um let me find the top of it mm. it's, it's a um Hohi Locatelli yes um oh my gosh so that's the back And then oh, short beautiful. rows on the back. You were talking about that a minute ago. There were short rows all yeah. along here. And I still have to put the buttons on. But anyway. That is a beautiful, beautiful achievement. And you prevailed. You got it out of timeout and you got back into it. And look at that gorgeous thing. <sighs> yeah, it's and beautiful. Our 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 uh, local yarn shop is doing um, finish it February, and I'm pulling out all kinds of stuff like that. I made sure I got it done, and then all kinds of little things that all I need to do is weave in the ends, or block it. So or... yeah, yeah. I had a pair. We did a finish along last summer, and because summers are so busy for us that it's hard for us to do a, a full fledged knit along. Um, but. I had a pair of socks in the in my closet in a project bag. One sock finished, the other sock I just had like this much left. And I thought to myself, what? Like what what made me put this? I mean, I probably it was another project I wanted to start, but how silly. It didn't take me but any time at all. And then I had a pair of socks and I was like, oh my God, it's been down in this bag for too long. That's I can gorgeous. Relate. Thank you. Yay. Well, I'm one of those people that has all kinds of projects going at once because you never know what you want to work on. <clears throat> so, you know, um, so right now I'm actually working on a hat. Let me, let me spotlight you. Keep holding it up just one sec. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So it's this light blue and then it's got a, a horizontal striping effect to it. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that's and, so cool. Yeah. And I, um, it's made with wool folk. 
Have you seen that yarn? It's a very mm -hmm. soft chainette. Um, this one is called Far, F-A-R. Um, they have a bunch of different ones and they're, they're wool and they're really soft, really soft. And they have, um, this particular is, that's a nice muted colors, but it mm -hmm. really, it's really soft and it wears really well. My husband, I made him a sweat, a, a hat and he beats it up like you wouldn't believe. And it still looks really good. <laughs> what was the name of the yarn again? Wool. Wool folk. Wool folk. Yeah. Wool folk. Wool folk. And what's, and what is the, um, the weight? This is, um, I think this is considered a worsted. Okay. I think it's a worsted. Cool. It's called FAR, F-A-R. Beautiful. And what is the pattern? Oh, it's their pattern. Um, oh, oh, it's okay. I have, it is called NABO, N-A-B-O. Hmm. Cool. Well, next week we'll be announcing our March knit along, which is going to be very exciting. I think we're going to do a special little announcement podcast. Hopefully we'll get that recorded and we'll release that on Wednesday. But yeah, give people That's some fun. time to start dreaming. <laughs> that sounds great. Oh, Jill. Hello, Jill. Oh, maybe frozen. Are you there, Jill? Hmm, that's funny. I can't hear it at all when I unplug my. Oh. Can you hear us? Good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. hi. Yeah. I my speaker went out on me. I unplugged my headset and it disappeared. Hi. I just what? couldn't resist coming in, even though I missed the first few. I had so much fun knitting the sweater. And it's a oh lovely gosh, pattern. I, I would have knit more, you know. We've I've definitely been... got some people knitting their second one. And oh my gosh, but tell us about your yarn. Did you use the Malibu Go Chunky? I did. And you know, I had my doubts about using such a chunky yarn and on 10 and a half, but it's great. The lovely yarn. It's a great pattern. It was easy to follow. And I would definitely make another one. But I trouble is I came over to Cashmere Goat on, on Friday to look at the yarn and I I just can't decide because the Malabregos are all so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm working on another in the spirit of, of Kate Davies, I'm working on another one of her sweaters, which is this one, which is Sheen. Oh it my is gosh. So much fun. She really she really is a fun Shetland knitter. And so wow. I I you have been working on it for a while now, but you know, when I get going on it, you really can get a lot done fast. So, um, Jill, you said it was called Sheen, like S H E E N, or no, it's 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 a Gaelic Sheen that is S C H E E N. Okay, and perfect. I, I actually bought the kit from her, figuring I might as well try out her yarn and see how similar it was to Jameson's, you know. And it's very similar to Jameson's. You could swear it's the same yarn. And tell us, tell us what, what that like. Is it a pullover or a cardigan? What? Oh yes, it's a it's kind of a boat neck cardigan. And like many of her sweaters, it's a little bit um, cropped, and so I'm going to make it a little longer. And my, oh my, my theory is, I like the crop sweaters. They're fun to wear, but I want a sweater that I'm going to want to wear in ten years. Yes. I'm ancient <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful you do such beautiful knitting it's so nice to have you on the zoom again well it's so nice to see some of the of the familiar faces and thank you for having me back even though i i unfortunately had to skip uh the beginning but i'll be back and i can't wait to see what you're going to do for the next knit along i love your knit alongs oh, great well lovely to see you i'm seeing and was Ellen. How did you experience shipping the kit from Scotland? Oh, she's great. If she's not busy, she just puts them in the mail immediately, and they don't take very long at all. I, and I haven't heard any bad stories, have you? Uh, well, I've never shipped a, a kit from overseas, so that's why I was curious how your experience was. Well, and it's just fun once in a while to get some yarn from someplace in Europe. You know, it seems like 
almost like taking a trip yourself, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, this this is my current project. And you Beautiful. mentioned it longer than the pattern. Is there enough yarn in the kit to do that? Oh yes. Um, the thing is, when you when you knit these color work yarns, you very often end up with quite a lot of leftover yarn. And as it turned out, I looked at my stash from other things I've knitted, and I actually had some yarn that matched it, which was useful. Oh, very good. And you're doing like a a, a fair isle? Is it fair isle knitting or? Um, it's Shetland knitting, really. Shetland knitting. Okay. Yeah, and if, if you think about it, Fair Isle is just the most northern of the Shetland Islands, I think. Is that so is that stranded color work? Yes. Yes, I, I'll even I, I pinned, but I'll sh even show you the back. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> oh, it looks ah! good. Oh, very good. And my <laughs> my rule is to pick up every three or four stitches, mm -hmm. pretty re pretty religiously. But you know what? She's her patterns have only one place that it's more than five stitches. So that's okay. that's not so bad, but I love changing colors. You know, you do maybe five rows and then you get some new colors to work with, which is really nice. Colors this time of year are really what it's about. Entertainment so anyway. knitting. No, I just what said entertainment you knitting with your yarn. Yes, for sure. That's for sure. By the way, I've been really amazed here. At, I, I'm in Rockland, some of you know, at a retirement community. It is so much fun. There are so many knitters here. And one of the things that's really nice is quite a lot of them have problems with their knitting. And it's so nice to, I, I actually enjoy fixing problems with knitting. And it's so nice to do that, to help them out. I think they needed to have someone who, who lives here that they could come to. But I've gotten to work on other people's knittings a lot as, as a result, kind of fun. That's awesome. So I, so I'm going to bug them to make a tr another trip to Kashmir Goat from this place. They have a little bus and everybody gets in the bus. And um, I think they need to get get some good yarn. Well, so you I was saying, to. I think before before you got on, that the sale goes through next Monday or this coming Monday. So it goes through the 12th. I don't know if you can get the bus together before that. Oh, I'll write that down. Yeah, February twelfth. Huh? That's coming right up, though. That's next. It, it is. That's three. That's three days from Friday. So what mm -hmm. is that through the weekend? Yep. So and then all day, all day Monday. So and also we, Monday. What, yep. What Kristen found was that so like ending on a Sunday always meant that there were people that forgot and like would email on Monday, like, "Oh my God, I missed it!" And so she said, "Ah, why not just extend it through Monday?" Okay. Yeah. I, I will see what I can do. I don't, you know, it'll depend on what else they have scheduled. But but since I've been here, they haven't had any good trips. And I kind of think they need a road trip. Of course, it means, you know, this is this is the group that will come with their wheelies. Yes. <laughs> well, let's see. We have, we have a knitting group that meets in store on Fridays from 11 to 1, which sometimes can be a little crowded around the table. So for the wheelie, mobility maybe like a friday afternoon might be a good time because that group would have cleared out yeah that would be good or they they yeah actually it probably should be a weekday i went to that group last week what a dynamite group of women that is they were knitting such it's interesting stuff i really loved it. it was a little crowded but it was really great to to get to go to it, it's such a, um, you know, it's really interesting, the different groups that meet and the different kind of flavors and the Monday, Friday group meets from 11 to 1. And I don't know, I guess it's just sort of morphed and changed over the years. And it is so beautifully welcoming. And, and, and then we have our Wednesday 4 to 7 group too, which is, you know, different people can come to a Wednesday evening, the you know, some people don't want to drive it in the evening hours or whatever. And all of our groups are so good. There's always laughter. There's always great stories. Um, and, and, and just to see what a welcoming place. And there's definitely been folks who are new to the area who, you know, show up and then are like, oh, wow. And now I have friends to call and this is great. And it's, that's a very special part of what the, what the shop community does, I think. And hopefully what we're doing here online in Zoom world.
Well, it's beautiful I see. what you're doing here online. Oh, thank you. I have oh. a yarn question. Yes, Mary Ellen. Um, I had this yarn in my stash. You can't see it very well. It's. I'm going to spotlight you, so keep holding it there for just a sec so we can all take a look. Okay. It's 100% it's wool and it's marled. And I didn't know how it would look if I made a car bath with it. Has anyone made anything with yarn that's marled? Oh, yeah, my, I mean, marled. Work. I'll show you. Yeah. You can oh, let me so, hold on. I'm taking the spotlight off Mary Ellen so we can see you. Let's keep it up there for. Oh, minute. I see. Okay. Yeah. So and you actually. Can now this is not this is uh, I have a sample that has been uh, that has been uh, blocked so you can see a little bit better on the blocked sample but mm. it's actually beautiful. Mm. Can you see yeah. the marble? Yeah, the light is not so great, but let's see if I can move it a little bit so you can see. Nice. That has less contrast than this does. This is more. Well, so, oh. and I will add oh. to uh, Mary Ellen that one of our uh, local knitters, she took two strands of Patagonia and mm -hmm. held them together and one in like a heather gray and one in sort of a plummy pink. Uh -huh. And so she like made her own marl. It's beautiful. Okay. It's beautiful. Okay. I think it would work really, really well. Okay. I don't know if if Cora is on the line, but Cora used, so I'm using Barocco Natural in a uh, Saudo, which, so it's marled, but it's, one of them is off-white, the other is beige, but they have an, the same yarn in a different colorway, which is uh, off-white and silver. And the off-white and silver is closer to what you're showing. Okay. And, and so Cora, the younger knitter who was here last Wednesday, that's her yarn. So I don't know if she's on, but she can probably show you. That would be a little more contrasty than mine. Right. Yeah. But well, I thank can... you. Yeah. But it's Cora is not yeah. Cora is not here tonight. She's skiing. I heard from her mom. <laughs> uh, okay. And we have another and... reason to do a swatch. <laughs> and you'll see. Yeah, what do it you looks I you was wondering when you got up here at this point. Oh, I, I wait, hold, hold on. Oh, sorry. Go, say that again, Mary Ellen. I couldn't hear you. I just thought when it joined up here, I wasn't sure if it would. I It'll think with the less contrast, it's fine. But this is this is medium. I wouldn't call it, you know, real strong. Could you look on Ravelry and filter for that yarn in that pattern that other people I, have made? I, I did do an advanced search and put Marled in, and I didn't come up with much of any, anything. If um, you, what um, Meg was just saying, though, is if you are looking at the car bath, and because we know there's thousands of projects on there, when you're on the pattern details page, if you like right. look at the other ones, and there's one that says yarns, and then yes. you could click on that and search for like, uh, Barocco Chunky Naturals, okay. which comes in like the one that Zena's using and that Cora was using as well. So that's another option. But I think it would look really great, actually. I really do. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I don't think that the um, decrease part you're going to notice any different. That yarn. Oh, okay. It, the marling, it looks so different when it's knit together than when it's you see it in the hank. It's really hard to picture what it's going to look like. So you should do a swatch okay. and then you'll know for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and for anybody the, who doesn't, oh, go ahead, Mary Ellen. On the other, the yarn we were talking about a little while ago, the far, the wolf oak far, um, I've made uh, like four or five hats out of that. And I wear them constantly and I've given them as gifts. Um, they're really, really warm and they hold up just like uh, Teresa said. And it's, the pattern I use is, I think it's called Snow Fling, F-L-I-N-G, or Snow Flinga. Anyway, it's really easy, and I I, I love that yarn. Yeah, it's fun what to... Is, the yarn again? What is the I'm name gonna, of the... Um, oh, I'm, just, well, I'm spotlighting them. Um, yeah, this is Jennifer. She's oh, holding up a nice marled carbine. Okay, box. great. 
fine. Thank you, so you Jennifer. There's yeah. your answer. <laughs> And for anybody that doesn't know, Kristen, who's the elder cashmere goat on the Zoom right now, Kristen is the goat owner. And it's so special that she's here because often she's running the Zoom, the in-store knit along at, at the store at the same time. Yeah, I'm I'm here today. Um, I'm home, I should say. <laughs> I had a little headache and I had someone else come in, but I thought I'd pop in and say hi. I will Hello. be running the Zoom next week, so That's you guys will have to help me along. <laughs> Love the fabric on your curtains there, Kristen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's really cute. Is that your kid's sewing room? No, it's my bedroom. <laughs> I love it. It's really cute. It it's kind of weird, but you know, so am I. So there you go. Awesome. Character. We call that character. Yeah, there's oh, monkey. I there's monkey. Kristen, can I ask because we this came up earlier? Um how many swan dance motifs did How Nunny do? She did one more than the pattern. Extra. So in the body of the pattern, they called for you to do four. She did five and then continued on. So she has seven total. And I was back and forth about how many I should do. And hers seemed perfect to me. But then when she blocked it, I felt like it was a little longer than I, she loved it but I felt like it was a little longer than I wanted and so and I know my yarn is going to to um gain a bit when it blocks so I've been on the fence but I think I'm gonna stick with the four hopefully I'm correct <laughs> somebody else is cool. making a lawn dance um, yeah, when did that, it was, um, yes, Wendy, Wendy Callis. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. So I, I can't wait I to I just wear. watched it. I'm just starting. I just watched oh. it and I'm casting on. So Is that Guido? It's, um, the Noro. Yeah. That's yeah. the same one I'm doing. It's the same color? Mm hmm I love the color. Love, love, love it. It's been so fun to knit with. You Color only had one ball left in the store. No, I, think. I don't. I have 12. They came today. Oh. <laughs> so if you need more, there's okay. more. <laughs> I may be coming up there. So <laughs> that's what my and swan dance still right now. So if you want it now, you get 20% off through Monday. So that's what my so swan okay. dance is. It is. Gray Sweeto. Oh, yeah. The color seven. Yep. It's the best color. It's my leftover ball. It's is like it leftover? <laughs> oh, that doesn't, that's not much leftover. I mean, that's a lot leftover. <laughs> well, I shortened the sleeves. I did one oh, less because I have short arms. Okay. How many did you do for the body? What it called for. Oh, you did. Yep. Y'all have to, I have a picture of me and my swan dance. I'd love to see it. I'll, guys... I'll send it, I'll send it out. Okay. Ears. Um, it's it's not as tunicky length as I think the picture, sh okay. the original one shows, but it's a comfortable length for me because I'm only five four. Okay. Okay. Did you find it grew? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. it did. Not super much, but it it did. That's why it was so leery of the sleeves. Sometimes when you make sleeves. Oh, yeah. They just make the sweater just Giant. not look as nice, not look as polished mm -hmm. because they grow and they get too long. Yeah. So I think I'm starting to find what length I must have for sleeves to That's actually cool. work and look good. That's awesome. Good, yeah, good thing to have those measurements that are very specific to our bodies and just like, oh, yeah, I like my sleeve this long. Hmm. And did the gauge of 20 rows per four inches, that, does it hold up on the sleeves after blocking? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, my sleeve, I, I definitely, when after I blocked mine, I looked at it and I was like, oh, these sleeves want to grow big, but I'm not going to let you. So I, you know, that I was able to with, I had my measuring tape and I was able to just like scooch things in and pat them down and scooch them and then measure. And 
worked out. Yeah, I tried it on before I did the cuffs and then tried to put a tape measure on my arm and hold it there to see how much more I needed and where I should stop to allow for a little bit of growth once it, once I blocked it. So mm -hmm. you did a provisional cast on on the sleeves then? I did. Because I knew 21 would be way too long for me. I kind of wished I had done that too. And is it difficult to do provisional cast on, on a, in the round? Like no, I, I, just, I looked at Romy Hill. I think I mm, followed yes. her provisional Ro cast on and use that method. And it worked, for, I followed her instructions and it was fine, it was easy to rip. Sometimes I can't rip them out, right? But this ripped out easily. So that's there Romy was, Hill on YouTube or? Yes, it, yes. And also um, Linda, I'm gonna write that one down and I'll add it to our um, YouTube playlist. But Linda Harmon, who's, who's one of our regular Zoomers, not able to be here tonight because she's with her mom. Um, but she was sorry to miss it because she has that beautiful Carbeth Swan dance. So she was like, I was so ready to get on screen and give you the full fashion show. Um, <laughs> but she, she sent me a, a link, which is already in the YouTube playlist to how to do provisional cast on with the I court with a, sorry, with the uh, barber cords that oh, looked okay. really, really easy. It was like, literally you jam that barber cord on the tip of your needle and then you cast on and anyway it was cool so i will also at look for the romy hill one because i love their i found um, it with a crochet hook too and and i found that to be a game changer because it was so easy that's what i used yeah, yeah. Nice. that's what i used it's with very pinks has one with that yeah mm -hmm. with the crochet hook mm -hmm. did you find it easy oh yeah with the hat she did it it was really easy yeah. I remember before I did the first time I ever did provisional cast on, I thought it was like this really like advanced thing. And that for in my mind, and then I did it and I was like, oh, that's not advanced. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually so simple. <laughs> oh, well, listen, we are at the top of the hour already. Always our time goes by so quickly and we got some good questions answered. We had some tips shared, some new projects and um, yeah. So thank you everybody for hopping on for another Wednesday Zoom. And I won't be with you next Wednesday, but Kristen will for anybody who can join. Yeah. I look forward to it. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Hello. a great rest of your Hello. evening. By the way, knitting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you too. Bye. Be happy. Bye.